Hello and welcome back to another Cyber Squad gaming video. Today we're going to take another look at hard spaceship breakers. And last time we broke down a tier 2 ship, now we're going to take a look at breaking down this larger tier 3 ship. As you can see there's some more exterior structures that you can take off when you take the side of the vessel off. The coolant area is now in the front of the vessel and instead of taking off the rear first we're going to take the front off first. So let's get into this and see how it goes. Now first things first, we're going to get inside. I found that getting inside the vessel and stripping it from the inside out is the fastest way to do this. So we're going to blow that hatch, we're going to go through the airlock and into the main structure. Tier 3 strips also have a much larger set of work orders, so we have to plan our work much more efficiently because there's less spare electronics and mechanics that we can leave. So just like the tier 2 ships, the first thing we're going to do is pull all the supplies off the wall if we want them, repair kits and things like that. We're going to look for keys, we're going to look for cassettes and recordings, and then the first thing we're going to do is depressurize the hull and start from there. Now you can see at this point that we're dealing with a very very similar structure. It's actually also called a mackerel. It's just a heavier tier of mackerel. So now that we have the inners done we're going to vent the atmosphere and we're going to head off to the rear of the vessel and go and pull that reactor out just like we do with the mackerel class and that's two simple bolts we got to remove and we'll put a tether to pull it down. So we're going to use the pushability, shove that section of the hull out, we're going to tether that to the processor, and we're going to flip around and pull the reactor out all in one move. We're becoming professional ship breakers at this point. Processing valuable objects. Credits awarded. Next I break out the four bolts that hold the rear of the vessel. This now has a thruster unit in it that we can also recover, so I'm going to show you how to take that thruster unit out. First, we want to pull this leather. It makes sure that the thruster disengages. We can actually cause a fuel line rupture, but I've done this a dozen times and none of them seem to have caused a fuel line rupture. We then rotate around the back, cut off the two bolts connecting the thruster, and what we can do then is put this in the processor and then pull the thruster unit out, which you'll see in a second. That takes a little bit more finesse. Now you can see the tethers have a force, so when I put a tether on a low weight item, you see the speed it went off at? So it means that you can multiply the number of tethers and move heavy items much, much quicker with multiple tethers or even move heavy items that weren't movable before. As you can see, there's nothing else in there. So now we're going to go take off all of the bottom outer hull. The reason I do this is all of the electronics, all of the packages, all the cargo, everything is inside the inner hull. And we need a quick access to be able to just drag it down to the barge. Now something I didn't know at the time when this happened is if you have one of the large cargo items sitting on the hull, it acts as like a gravity and sucked the plate all the way to the bottom. It's fine, I just redirect the plate back up to the top and the cargo comes off. So now the process starts of stripping the inner part of the hull. So we're going to pull the plates off the walls, the electronics off, and we're going to take all the cooling lines off and we're going to actually pull them straight to the barge to speed up this process. Okay. 
So once all those items are out of the hull, we can then go ahead and cut the remaining plates. We can then take those off to the processor. So now we've completely exposed everything we want to get access to. Don't be afraid to use your push ability. You can always go and tether the item straight away like I'm doing now, or you can even just hold it with your grab ability so it keeps moving really quickly and then you just stop it. That way you can quickly get all these hull pieces out. So now we go back up, we'll get the remainder of the cargo, we'll pull the electronics off the walls, we'll take the chairs out of the cockpit, and this is where you just get all those extra few credits that you need for the simple work of stripping the base off. In order to speed up time here, we're just going to skip ahead. All I'm doing is stripping out all the electronic parts. And we're going to rejoin now where I'm taking off the roof or the other side of the hull so that we can take all those plates out and really start exposing the carcass of the vessel. Now I got a little bit cocky on how much I wanted to overheat that tool. I ended up catching myself on fire, but then I went and got a med kit, went and got some extra oxygen, and then we keep going. That little damage isn't that bad, but it is worth noting that you probably don't want to set yourself alight if you're near flammable liquids. So here we go, we take off the last two cutting positions and now the whole roof is coming off the vessel. So we're going to head out, we're going to fire up those tethers, and we're going to take all these over to the processor. It's quick, simple, and easy. Object accepted for processing. Credit deposited. So you can see there's two little hinges there that you can cut and you can take the door off or they call it the hatch and send that down to the barge but I just like to strip these things quickly and get the bulk of the money out of them as quickly as possible. So now we're going to strip away the front of the vessel so we're going to take the whole cockpit away so there's only four bolts that hold that in place but then that's going to expose more area that we can get down the sides to strip the side paneling off of this hull. So I'm just stripping out all the electronics and furniture from this section of the cockpit and we're going to skip ahead so we can take off the whole front end of the vessel. So as you can see there's an exterior plating to the hull. You can see the structure in the black there with the bolts lining it up and what you didn't know is that when you pull a tether off you can pull this plating off. Watch this. Now you can also pull it off with your grapple but I just fired off of the tethers and I'll go buy more tethers. I just think it's quicker and more efficient. The idea is as much money for as little time as possible. So we headed back to get some additional tethers and now we're back at the ship again. And this time we're going to try and multiply those tethers up and pull the side of this vessel off in one go. So try and find a place that's square on the end that isn't going to cause the tethers to break and just put about three or four on there to get that piece moving. Now you could have broken this down in more detail. There's some coolant inside, which you'll see now. There you go, it's the coolant sections. You can be quick and you can cut them. Or another way to do it is fire one or two tethers one direction, get it moving, then fire some tethers in the other direction and get it moving. I try to quickly get them out, but I couldn't. So we just move on. The majority of what's going in there is processable, except for those two pieces. And now, just like the smaller mackerel, we've exposed the side. 
So let's go in there. Let's cut all those bolts that are all along the bottom. Let's take the power cells out. There's one on either side. And then once we've done that, we can start peeling back the outer hull and expose the center carcass. And we're almost there. The one thing to be careful of while you're doing this is at the very end of this hallway or this outer hull section, there is the fuel. So we want to make sure that fuel isn't leaking everywhere. So first we're going to make sure we don't cut it and then we're going to go up to it and we're going to pull the valve to seal the fuel line. Once we seal the fuel line, as we pull it away from the fuel line, it won't spray fuel everywhere. The other thing we have to think about is now we can take the nacelles off. Unlike the older mackerel or the other size mackerel, we could able to cut them from the inside, not the outside. So once you get inside, take the two bolts off, just push out with your thrusters and then pull them down to the barge with the tether. Now the reason I never took the outer structure off is all of that can go and be processed. Now you can see I tethered it to the plate and the plate gets ripped off just like before. So just make sure your tether goes to the main structure. It will take all of that stuff straight to the processor and it will save you a little bit of time and another 16 or so cutting sections that you need to pull out. Now you'll see when I pull the fuel out, you see it's not spraying fuel anywhere. So let's go ahead and fire that to the barge. Another piece to the job completed. And then we'll go back and we'll pull off the side. Oops, bad tether there, but we'll go again. Don't worry about multiple tethers. If you pull one tether in the wrong place and you put two in the right place, it will go to the right place. The tethers work as a pulling instrument. As you can see, our time is up for the day, so we're going to go back to the hub and then we're going to come back out and complete this vessel. So far, I think we've done a pretty nice job of stripping out the most efficiently as we can. Now, we're going to go take the other side of the hull out, repeating the same task. The problem is, is we have a door in the way. So how do we get around the back of the door and access those extra cutting sections? This is where you can shred a plate up in order to make extra space. Don't be afraid to really shred a piece. If you've got a piece that you cut like this and it won't come out, why not cut into smaller pieces and just push it out of the way? So you can see here, I try to pull it out, doesn't work. All right, let's just shred it into small pieces. Doesn't matter, we can keep going. Just make sure you don't cut the fuel, which is positioned behind this bulkhead. Remember, it's safety first, so shut the fuel line off. Let's take out this nacelle, and then we're going to repeat exactly what we did on the other side. Push it out, use the thrusters, tether it down. We're going to strip out the last couple of bolts here, which you can see. And then it really is a case of taking this whole side off with tethers. One thing you may notice is my split saw ended up with a zero repair left on it, but I kept using it and it kept working. I don't know if the efficiency goes down, it didn't feel like it, and I don't know whether or not I lost range or something, but it kept working. I don't know if this is a bug, but just be aware that it's possible that it will keep working. And as you see, I take out the sides, the whole back end where the thruster was housed is now coming away as well, and we can send that to the processor all on its own. Material 
still be very careful when moving fuel around. Even though you have turned off the fuel line, it doesn't mean that you can't rupture the fuel tank and explode. At some point, I'm going to try exploding a fuel tank in order to rip open the side of the vessel to strip it quicker, but that's for another video. At this point, I think we've done a pretty good job. All we have left to do now is take the back end of the vessel where the thruster was housed and put that to the processor. Then we take the inner carcass and we send that to the furnace. At that point, you've completely taken every part of the vessel. I'm gonna let you watch the last piece of the video without commentary, but I just wanna thank you for watching. And if you liked what you saw here, remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'm sure you'll be seeing more from us at Cyber Squad Gaming. Tether supplies running low. Valuable object processed. Credits deposited.